Hello, welcome back to the module on international finance. Next, we're going to talk about the concept of cross rates. Cross rates refer to exchange rates that are between two other currencies not involving the US dollars. In the example that we have just seen, you sh we sh show the quotation of um, Mexican peso and US dollars and Japanese yen and US dollar. So a cross rate will be between directly between peso and Japanese yen, for example. Usually a cross rate is computed based on direct or indirect quotes and it is based on the US exchange rate. The reason why most exchange rates were based on US dollar exchange rate is because the US dollar is the most common um, currency denomination in international trade. So even though um, Japan may be um, conducting a trade with Mexico, uh, a lot of times they will first look at what the Japanese exchange rate is with the US dollar and what the peso exchange rate is with the US dollars. And then they figure out what the exchange rate is between the Japanese yen and peso. The reason for that is the amount of trading between US and Japan and between US and Mexico is significantly bigger than the amount of trade that occurs between Mexico and Japan directly. So let's take a look at an example for um, cross rate. So we we're talking about Japanese yen and Mexican peso. So now we're going to compute the exchange rate, or called the cross rate, directly between the two currency. So we know that um, yen was quoted as an indirect rate in our example, and peso is quoted as a direct rate in our example. Um, if both of them are in the same quotation, meaning if they are both a direct or both are indirect, we'll need to do some conversion, meaning to convert one into a direct quote and one into an indirect quote. But in our example, since one is already a direct quote, that will be peso, and yen is an indirect quote, um, we don't need to do any conversion. So in order to find out what the Japanese yen is per Mexican peso, we simply compute the yen to peso exchange rate. So remember that the yen is an indirect rate, so that's what gave us um, this exp expression. So remember that indirect rate is the foreign currency per US dollar. So the yen quotation is yen per US dollar. And the peso is a direct rate. Direct rate is dollar per peso. So we already given the correct formula. So when you multiply these two together, you will see that the US dollar is the denominator and that cancels out with the US dollar in the numerator. And the ending result, the answer is yen per peso, which is what we want. We wanted that as our crossover rate. So all we have to do is take the yen exchange rate, which is 110.751 yen per US dollar, multiply by the peso rate, which is $1 per 0 0.05131 peso. And we have a yen to peso exchange rate, cross rate of 5.889. So uh, what this means is that it takes 5.8809 yen to purchase one peso. So that's the exchange rate, direct exchange rate between yen and peso. And you can take a moment to compute other cross rate between yen and, for example, British pound. You may ask, well, how do we know we can convert that? How do we, how do we know that the exchange rate of yen and peso can be computed based on the exchange rate between yen and dollar and dollar and peso? The answer is a theory called exchange rate parity. Exchange rate parity is a theory that says the cross rate must hold. Um, the reason why it must hold is because if the relationship between peso and yen do not follow the relationship between the direct quote of yen and indirect quote of peso to dollar, it creates an arbitrage opportunity. Arbitrage is defined as an opportunity to make profit without making any investment. So if you are get this a risk-free profit, if you guarantee risk-free profit with no investment, everybody will jump on the opportunity and therefore um, that opportunity will disappear very quickly.
So you've, you've uh, remember that the foreign exchange market is the largest financial market in the world. Um, there are ma which means there are many, many traders on that market. If any trader sends a discrepancy or a our, our, our parity situation between any two exchange rates, they will make the trade and earn the profit until the exchange rate follows the parity again. So that happened very rarely. It's a highly efficient market. So as far as the cross rate is concerned, it's relatively um, empirical evidence has shown that it holds um, most of the time. What is more tricky is not whether or not the cross rate relationship holds um, at a given moment. That is almost always true. What is interesting is does this cross rate relationship hold over time? And this is the more important and more difficult challenge for financial managers who are planning um, a company's investment over a long period. When exchange rate changes, we call we refer to that as a, we refer to currency as appreciating or depreciating. Uh, let's put some concrete numbers behind it. So let's say if um, yen goes from the yen exchange rate goes from 110.751 to 120. What does that mean? That means a dollar, a US dollar, one US dollar used to be able to buy 110.75 yen, can now buy 120 yen. So that means each dollar you can buy more yen. So what in foreign exchange language, that means that the US dollar is appreciating or strengthening against the yen, and the yen is depreciating or weakening versus the dollar. So because you can now buy the same one US dollar can buy more yen, the dollar becomes stronger, it's becoming stronger, and the yen is becoming weaker. So what happened to your personal situation? So remember that before, the tuition at the 1 million yen tuition would translate into about a thousand dollars um in us dollars but now at the new exchange rate if you divide a million yen by 120 you will find that under the new exchange rate the currency is much much lower so uh, the yen is much much lower so now your tuition is only eight thousand $333 in US dollar. So as you can see in this example, um, a strengthening dollar is good for someone who has US dollars and is spending spending the money aboard. Uh, the same is true if um, you're buying import goods because if something costs a million yen, now that same item is going to cost cheaper $8,333 in US dollars. So a strengthening dollars will make import goods cheaper, make tourism or going to Japan cheaper, but will, um, but on the other hand, if you're a Japanese consumer trying to buy US product, a strengthening US dollar will make US product more expensive in Japan. To understand the relationship between exchange rate today and how exchange rate may change over time, we need to introduce the concept of foreign rate, uh, spot rate, and forward rate. Spot rate is the exchange rate that is in effect right now. So if you are going to Japan today and you go to the airport and you exchange your dollar for yens, you're exchanging it at the spot rate. Forward rate is exchange rate that you decide today, but the transaction will happen sometime in the future. And the forward rate is based on a forward contract. So think of a company who is buying products. So let's say you are you want to build, um, you're building a new building and you want to buy steel from China. And it takes time to manufacture steel. So you you buy the steel today, you make the purchase, you put in the purchase order today and buy the steel, but the steel won't be delivered until six months from now. And you want to lock in the price, obviously, today, so you know how much those steel will cost your company. So in such a situation, what the business will do is they will sign a purchase agreement at the same time, buy a forward contract to lock in the exchange rate for 
buying dollar six months from now when they have to make that payment. So the exchange rate they lock in today with that forward contract is called the forward rate. So no money exchanges hand today in that contract. Uh, all the money will exchange hand six months from now when you will take the US dollar exchange at the rate that you agree upon today, um, six months from now, and then you pay off your Chinese supplier. So that's a forward rate. And usually the forward rate is um, reported as indirect quotes. So if the spot rate is greater than the forward rate, the forward rate is said to be trading at a discount relative to the spot rate. So what that means is that you expect exchange rate to go down in the future. Um, on the other hand, if the spot rate is less than the forward rate, then it's trading at a premium. So again, premium and discount here simply is a signal for whether or not exchange rate is expected to go up or exchange rate is expected to go down. Um, And whether or not a forward rate is set at a premium or a discount depends on the relative interest rates of the two countries. And the reason why it's based on the relative interest rate of the two countries is due to an economic theory called covered interest arbitrage. A covered interest arbitrage says that if you are able to make money by investing money in one country and earn the interest rate in one country, at the same time enter into a foreign a forward contract that allow you to determine what the future exchange rate will be today, then that relationship must be fixed. If that relationship is not fixed, again, you will create an arbitrage profit opportunity and traders will take advantage of that and they will bid up the forward rate um, or the interest rate until this relationship holds. So cover interest arbitrage is oftentimes true, or actually very, very, very often true, most of the time is true, because of the large number of traders that participate in the um, interest rate market as well as the foreign exchange market. So that is why interest rate is important. When the interest rate is very different between two countries, then we can expect the forward rate to either go up or down between the two countries. To help us better understand the covered interest arbitrage, it is useful to take a quick look at um, two economic theories that relate to exchange rate. The first economic theory that relates to exchange rate is called absolute purchasing power parity. The absolute purchasing power parity is an extension of the concept of law of one price. The law of one price simply says that the same product must say, sell for the same price. Otherwise, in, people will go to whoever is selling the product at the cheapest price and competition will drive the price to be the same. And the absolute purchasing power parity um, extends the law of one price globally. Let me say, does, how well does this theory work in practice? Um, the answer is not very well. The absolute processing power parity has not been shown to hold in real life. And what is important for us to, to learn is not just that this theory doesn't work, but it's more important to say, well, why doesn't it work? Because conceptually we'll say everybody wants to buy at the lowest price. If you ever shop on Amazon.com or, um, or Baidu.com, you, you will naturally search for the person selling something at the lowest price. And knowing why it doesn't work is very, very important. So what we want to do, do is focus on the assumptions for the absolute purchase plan power parity and say what, which assumptions are being violated. Uh, most of the time you will find that um, the, some, sometimes the markets are protected by, by the government. Sometimes it's because the, um, the transportation of certain items are very difficult and costly. Um, it also could be because of um, product differentiation. So an example would be media um, and copyright um, enforcement. So um, some media companies change the file format whether or not a movie is distributed in the US versus in another country. And you need to have the right device to decode the format correctly, depending on the country you are in. So those are some of the um, company tactics that um, 
also prevent absolute persistent parity to be true. Another uh, concept that is closely related is called the relative purchasing power parity. The relative purchasing power parity says that the exchange rate movement between two countries depends on their relative inflation rate. So let's look at an example. If the inflation rate in the US is higher than the inflation in Japan, then the purchasing power parity, relative purchasing power parity will predict that US dollar would depreciate over time relative to the Japanese yen. The relative purchasing power parity is very closely related to the covered interest arbitrage because inflation rate and interest rate is highly, co highly correlated. So if a country has a high inflation rate, they will also tend to have a higher interest rate and a high inflation rate and higher interest rate will eventually lead to a depreciation in the currency. So this, um, at this point, we'll conclude this section on um, exchange rate theories. In the last section, we're going to talk about exchange rate risk and how companies can manage them.